Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to create a custom border for just about anything in your Squarespace website. We're going to review border styles, border sizes, and colors, and how to apply them to pretty much any element you wanna try. Now, all of these codes and information that I'm about to cover, I have put into a single PDF that you can download for free on my website, inside the square.co forward slash borders. So go ahead and grab that PDF so you can follow along. And when you're ready, let's hop into my demo site here and get started. So here we are in my demo site. And again, with these borders, we can adjust the size, style, and color, okay? So there are eight main types of border styles that you can use to create some really creative codes. You can technically set a border to hidden or none, but obviously those won't show anything. So we're just gonna talk about the eight styles you can actually see. So I'm gonna navigate to design and then down to custom CSS. And this is where I'm gonna paste the code we'll be working with. Over here, I actually have this as a really large button. So I'm gonna use the code name SQS block button element. And this is what we're going to add a border to. Let's start off with dashed. I'm going to say border 5px dashed, and then we'll just make it a solid black border. There we go. Let's go ahead and make that even bigger so you can really see it. We'll make it 15 PX. That's how we've adjusted the size of the border. Now we've put all three of these values into the same property line for border, but we can separate them and we'll get into that in just a little bit. Let's keep reviewing these styles first. So we have dashed, dotted is another one. This is what double looks like, obviously two lines. We also have groove. Now this one's kind of hard to see with solid black. So I'm actually gonna change this to teal. So we can see, there we go. Now you can see there's a slight difference between the border on the top left and, or on the top and on the left, as well as the bottom and the right. They kind of flip there to create that groove effect. Instead of groove, we can also change this to inset. So inset has the top and left being a slightly darker version of that color automatically. Then we have outset, which reverses it. So the top and left will be that teal color, but the right and the bottom will be the slightly darker version. And we also have ridge, which is kind of like the opposite of groove. And then we have solid, which is the one we're most familiar with. It's just going to be a solid line. So those are the eight border styles that we can visually see. Again, there are 10, but hidden and none uh, don't really apply here since we can't see them. So those are the eight that I like to work with when creating codes. Now let's talk about border radius. This is an interesting one as well. Border radius will actually change the shape of the object. So if I put a semicolon here and say border radius 15%, it's going to pull in the edges by 15%. That's 15% of the height and the width. Notice how it's not perfectly round. This button here is wider than it is tall. So the width is different than the height. So 15% will not create a perfectly round shape. But if I change this to 15 PX, that's actually a little too small. Let's go 50 PX so we can really see it. You'll see that's actually equidistant on both the top, right, bottom, and left. It's going to be more perfectly round. Now it sounds a little high level, but just stick with me here. We can also use REM. That's another absolute value. That'll be of the base font size, usually 16 PX. I try to focus on percentage or PX. Those are the most common, but I did wanna show you technically those other values can be applied, but when possible, try to stick with PX or percent. There we go. All right, now let's remove that border radius because I did wanna mention one other thing here, outline versus border. Those are two totally separate things. Let's go ahead and add an outline of 5px solid red and check it out. Outline actually goes outside the border. So that gives you the opportunity to create two different layers of these border styles for any object on your Squarespace website. In this example, it's a button. So I'm gonna remove outline because Let's scroll back up here. We also need to talk about changing the style, color, or size separately for different aspects of the object itself. I don't have to have the same border on every single side. I can say uh, border left color red, and now just the left border will be red. And I can say border right style dotted and now the right side gets the dotted style, you see how we can actually pull those out separately? You can identify the size, style, and color for any specific side of an object by declaring its actual side first in your code. So border left, color. Border right, style. Uh, let's go ahead and say border bottom width 
uh, 60 px. Now the bottom border is huge. Obviously this is not really a gorgeous design here, but I wanted to make sure you understood the concept of how we're breaking out these sides separately in our coats. Alrighty, that's it for your quick walkthrough of creating a custom border in Squarespace, just an overview of your options. Again, you have eight different styles to work with. We have dashed, dotted, double groove, inset, outset, ridge, and solid, which is the standard. And from there, you can adjust the size or the color as well. For these colors, you can use a hex color code or a web safe color name, whatever you're comfortable with. And you can isolate individual sides of the element, changing just the top or just the right border. Don't forget, you can use border radius to change the shape of an object by percentage or PX is what I prefer to use and what I recommend. And last but not least, you can also create an outline which will go outside of the border, giving you the option of just another layer to that specific element. Now, all of this is outlined in the PDF that I made for you, available for free at insidethesquare.co forward slash border. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to subscribe to my channel on YouTube to learn even more about customizing Squarespace because I post a new video every single week. Thanks again for watching and most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. If you liked this tutorial, you'll love my Squarespace CSS cheat sheet. I took all of my pro tips and custom codes specifically for Squarespace and put them into one gigantic PDF. Available now at insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS.